That's where one of my fears come from. When I was in the first grade, I had a speech impediment. I couldn't pronounce my S's or my R's. It really was a wabbit. And I had to get more... <laughs> I had to get marched out of the normal class to go to what they call the special ed class. Teachers, thank you for trying, but just because you called it special didn't make me feel special. <laughs> My name wasn't Ed. <laughs> but every time I got marched out, which was hard enough, it was even harder for me because my little brother Tim, we called him Timmer, was totally handicapped. He had cerebral palsy and he had braces on his legs. And he never took a full step by himself. He had severe mental retardation. He never said a full sentence. So my brother couldn't walk and he couldn't talk. And then half his body started to grow and half it stopped. So half my brother's body was bigger than the other side. And then scoliosis and curvature of the spine took his already crippled body and put him into a ball. And he couldn't even set up in a wheelchair Let's say the special body brace made of plastic with Velcro straps to hold him in. And if that wasn't enough hardship for one person, he had epilepsy. You know what that is? He'd have grand mal seizures where his whole body would just stiffen out and shake. And he'd have to wipe the drool that came from his mouth. But almost every single day when they got marched out of that room, somebody would go, there goes Bob. He's retarded just like his brother. And everybody would laugh. Remember the wrong philosophy, put others down, make yourself look better. To be honest, sometimes I'd even laugh on the outside, but there's a wise proverb that said, even in laughter, the heart can be in pain. That's why we have to really learn to listen and read between the lines and think, what would they really share with me if they trusted me and not just judge somebody from the outside? And so many nights I'd just cry myself to sleep. Now, please hear me. I didn't come to Nina for your pity. I hate pity. Because pity thinks, means that somebody thinks that they're better than somebody else. And their noses are up in the air even though they're looking down on you. But I'd cry myself to sleep and go, why can't they just accept us for who we are? Do you think I wanted a speech impediment? And I'm like, why can't they just respect us for what we have? As much as I love my brother, you think I wanted to be handicapped? But the hardest choice you'll ever make is after you've been disrespected. Will you lower yourself to their level or will you rise above it? Dr. Martin Luther King said, darkness cannot cast out darkness. Only light can do that. And hate cannot cast out hate. Only love can do that. But it's hard, even my own little situation. When I was your age, I had to take my brother Tim for walks in his wheelchair. But I knew people would point and stare and laugh because he was what? Different. And we bought the lie that different is wrong and different is bad. So I hate to say it, but I pushed my brother around certain blocks where I know nobody would see me. And my own brother, my own flesh and blood, I was embarrassed of. You don't know how much I wish I could have Tim here today. And he'd be in his wheelchair. And he'd probably make noises that interrupt this program. And I'd have to wipe the drool from his mouth. But I wish he was here and I could say, this is my brother Tim and I love him. This is my brother Tim and I'm proud of him. This is my brother Tim and he's a person too. And because of that, he deserves respect, just like anybody else. If you agree with that statement, you give that statement a round of applause right now. Thank you. Thank you. 